Throughout this video, you'll notice shorter timers and other values that are off from what you would expect on vanilla. I have my settings adjusted for shorter maturation times, adjusted imprinting timer, and also have the mating cooldown severely reduced. I'll have the settings I'm using on screen now. A baby with a three day maturation time will take around an hour and a half, with its cuddle interval being every 22 minutes. My name's Dekorsa, and with that out of the way, let's get started. First, you'll need creatures you want to breed. One male, one female, of the same species. If the creatures don't have a gender, you won't be able to breed it. There's also certain gendered creatures, such as mantis, that are sterile. A full list of these will be linked in the description. Second, you'll want to get the creatures next to each other, then enable mating in the behavior section of the wheel menu. The creatures will stop breeding if you disable mating, have them follow you if they're over encumbered, or if they get too far away from each other. You'll know if the creatures are mating due to the cluster of hearts over their head, as opposed to the single heart for the mate boosted buff. Once the mating process has completed, the female will either gain a gestation bar on her UI if she's a mammal, or lay an egg if she's not. You'll also notice a countdown timer on the female. This is the amount of time before she can breed again. For mammals, this doesn't show up until gestation period is complete. This timer can be as long as 48 hours. If you have an egg, drop it off in a hatchery and wait for it to hatch. A hatchery is typically an enclosed building with AC units to bring the insulation up high enough so you can ignore the temperature the egg needs to hatch. This is typically around 10 to 15 AC units, but can be higher or lower depending on the difference between the temperature the egg needs and the ambient temperature of the region. Eggs have an incubation period of between 1 and 6 hours or longer in the case of Quetzal and Giganotosaurus. If the creatures you're breeding are mammals, the baby will pop out at the end of gestation. During gestation, the female creatures will eat a little extra food, so make sure to keep your feeding trials stocked. Once you have your baby, you're going to need to take care of it. To start off with, babies will only eat food out of their inventory. They have a highly reduced weight compared to their weight stat, so it can only hold a limited amount of food at a time. I recommend having a Deodon nearby with passive healing turned on, just to get the baby through this stage without dying. Once the baby reaches the juvenile stage, they will start eating from a feeding trowel. Once the baby is born, it will have a timer on its UI that states when they will next want care. Once this timer counts down to zero, the baby will ask for one of three different imprinting activities. These are going for a walk, cuddling, and feeding. These are fairly self-explanatory. When it asks for a walk, you need to have the baby follow you and let it take a random number of steps. The distance is never too far. When it asks for cuddles, you just need to interact with it. When it asks for food, you need to make the type of food it wants, put the food in the last spot of your hot bar, then interact with the baby. Every time you imprint, you gain a certain percentage gain to the baby's imprinting bonus, and you will have several opportunities to imprint on your baby. The interval between these is about 8 hours by default. Completing these imprinting activities is optional. However, the more you're able to imprint, the higher the imprinting bonus the baby will receive. There's a further bonus if the person who imprinted on the baby is riding it after they have grown. The total time of maturation varies wildly between species. The average time will be about three days after hatching or being born. The longest time is 12 days. The shortest time is 12 hours. And that's how you breed creatures, but there's more to it. Parents pass on two types of traits to their offspring, color and stats. The offspring will have a random mix of these from each parent. There's also a potential for a mutation to happen. A mutation will happen at random and will give a large boost to a single stat and change a color region to a random color. The color mutation can occur on unused or static color regions or be a natural color for the creature, so color alone is not a good indication that a mutation has occurred. There's a limit to when these creatures can mutate, and I'm going to try to explain this the best I can. When you look at a creature, you can see its lineage and the total number of mutations received from each parent. When you add these numbers together, you can get the total number of mutations on this creature. 
If this total is higher than 20, this specific creature cannot produce a new mutation. However, if the other parent's total mutations are lower than 20, the offspring can potentially gain a new mutation. If both parents have total mutations higher than 20, the offspring cannot gain a new mutation. So, in other words, when you breed, the game will randomly determine stats as normal. Then check each parent for total mutations. If at least one parent has 19 or less total mutations, a mutation can occur on a random stat. When you're breeding for stats, you'll need to take note of the base stats of any creature you want to breed. The base stats are the stats the creature has before any stat points or other bonuses, such as imprinting, are added. I personally will either record it in a spreadsheet or as folder names in the creature's inventory, or do both. Then you want to make note of which creatures have the highest individual stats. Typically, you would want to capture a good mix of male and females of a particularly high level before you get started. I'd recommend capturing a total of around 10 creatures, but this is up to your discretion. Once you've done that, you can pick the creatures you want to breed together based on their stats. I personally pick the male creature who has the highest overall stats, then breed it with females who have higher individual stats. When the stats of the offspring are being determined, it is slightly weighted to give the higher stat, but not by much. Once the baby's born, check its stats. If it inherited the highest stat from both parents, keep it. Otherwise, cull it. My personal aim is to get the highest stats I possibly can from my genetic pool before attempting to migrate mutations onto my creatures. The main reason I do this is to prevent adding mutations onto creatures while I'm still attempting to move all the best stats to a single creature. While I'm at it, I try to have at least one male with the best base stats, and as many females with the best base stats as I can make, especially since females can have a very long cooldown timer after breeding. From there, I start trying to get mutations as I described before, then migrate the mutated stats as I did before with the regular stats. One last thing I want to talk about in this video is breeding for colors. This works almost exactly the same as stats. You need to pick out a creature that has the most correct color regions, then pick out a creature of the opposite sex that has a color region you want to transfer. You may need to do some extra breeding to set this up. Once you've done this, you need to breed the creatures together until you get the correct color combination. And that's it for breeding for colors, stats, and mutations. If this video was helpful, make sure you like and share it. Your support really helps out the channel. Thank you guys so very much for watching, and have yourselves a very good day. Oh. Hey, hey, quit it. Oh, did you finally get tired? Oh, your little butt.
Hey, 